That sounds cool, doesn't it? <laughs> Finally, the Sony shutter sounds good. <laughs> and it doesn't vibrate. <laughs> so this is Sony A7R II week. It is. And uh, both of us have received our uh, first cameras. Yeah, well, uh, actually, no. You, yours is actually a camera that you got from your dealer yep. on the day that they started to ship. Uh, and mine is a review sample that I got from Sony at a media event that I attended in Portland. Uh, and that was last week, which is now early uh, August. And uh, I just wanted to say something interesting before we start. So yeah. A7R2, one of the Sony people, as we were sitting and having breakfast one morning said so if this was december 31st and you were going to publish an article on the best camera of the year and this hadn't shipped yet what would you announce and i had a long pause and i thought this year calendar 2015 nothing add this prediction here we are in august i don't know what other manufacturers are going to do this will be camera of the year on virtually every website and magazine. It is that good. I would agree with you. I've, I've never been this excited in the last few years to get a camera that is so radically new. And it just is incredible with capabilities and the image quality that we've seen from it. 42 megapixel full frame in a body that is as small, if not smaller, than the APS-C size cameras or the micro four thirds cameras. It is amazing. So now we have this somewhat chunky Battis 25 millimeter oh, come lens on, on it. It's not chunky, it's beautiful. Okay, <laughs> it's chunky beautiful. Uh, and I have to say a couple of things. So besides all of the great features, 4K video, articulated uh, rear LCD, high res OLED viewfinder, five axis on sensor stabilization, on and, on and on and on and on. It's just, you know, this is, you know, almost literally everything but the kitchen sink. But one of the things that I like about it is finally Sony's user interface. Their menu interface, number of custom buttons, all of that is comparable to what everyone else is doing. For a while, Sony's user interface sucked. It no longer sucks. As a matter of fact, it's not bad. And things like this function button. I use which that a lot. I use it a lot. It just calls up a little mini menu, and you can quickly scroll and change items. It's It works very quickly. Program three different custom buttons, C1, C2, C3, to be whatever you want yep. them to be. Um, th this is cool. Now, this is what's interesting here. So this is now your walk around small, you know, 42 megapixels in a handheld camera. Same camera, <laughs> but now with uh, the dual battery grip and uh, this monster lens, which I love. This is Sony's Cine lens. It's a 28 to uh, 135 fixed F4 lens. It is brilliant. Looks I won't cool. go into it. I have reviewed it. It not only looks cool, it is cool. And this is not just for cinematographers. This is a lens for still photographers. The image quality is superb. I won't go into it. But this just shows you the configurability of these, these, the camera. This, I think they're going places with it. One of the things that they've also added some new features in here when you hit the function button and go to it. You've got an automatic focus either, you know, uh, setting. So if you set it to that, it can go continuous or single focus. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a self timer mirror up uh, mm -hmm. function now. There's a whole slew of other new little features. I would really suggest, and what you really need to do is sit down with that manual and oh. spend quite you know, a bit of time just going into each and of And in my review, my print review, I'm mm -hmm. going to discuss some of the customization. So for example, I don't like having focusing on the shutter release. Yep. So I'll show, and it isn't obvious how to do it. This is where Sony's user interface still needs some work. Uh, but you can program this little button here to be yep. the autofocus button, and you can have this. So push the lever down, press the button, you lock exposure. Yep. Push the lever up, press the button, you lock focus. And you can have both, front and, and back. And you can have you both. you set me up that way yeah. yesterday. Yeah. And think, talking about focus, 399 
phase detection autofocus points on the sensor. It is one. Of, it's it's a joy to focus track. Yes, it's a really... bird or a deer or something like that, and you see these little dots jumping all over the screen as it tracks, and it can shoot five frames a second, and it tracks focus at five frames a second. And it's, there's, it's there's brilliant. There's a number of focus field modes that they have in there. So depending on how you have it set up, it is really cool when the little buttons like flash and all of a sudden it locks on and it turns to the square and then it expands as yeah. it you know it there's it the the electronic viewfinder gives you so much more information like that. And you can set uh, setting which is a uh, digital manual focus which actually allows the uh, um, a focus peaking mask to come up uh -huh. so you can actually see what the range of focus right. is. Right, go into manual, turn the focus ring, it automatically goes into a high magnification mode with focus peaking, touch the shutter release, it goes back to And when we've rate. been shooting the last few days, we're out here in the Palouse and we have wheat fields and skies and a lot of highlights. And if you turn zebras on, the exposure compensation is here. So as you're actually looking through there and you start seeing a zebra, you know, you just move the uh, exposure adjustment, and I shoot aperture priority in that particular mm -hmm. case, until the zebras go away and then shoot your shot, and you don't have anything going out as far as the highlights go. Yeah, so absolutely. It, the, it's very fast once you get the handle of it. High ISO, let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. This is, according to, and I have not done definitive tests of my own, but for what I've just been reading from people who've been testing the camera for the past week, this is about one stop less than the Sony S, okay, the 7S, which is one of the kings of low light. Um, I've taken some shots at ISO 100,000. Hundred thousand, hundred thousand. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I'm I'm from the days when ISO four hundred was fast, <laughs> okay, uh, and noisy and grainy. Yep. ISO a hundred thousand here is better than ISO four hundred was ten years ago. Well, that's all. I, that, you know, that's what all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> we we were setting our cameras up and uh, comparing settings yesterday, and um, you have an ISO auto function, which is really clever, especially when you're working with longer lenses and things. And we'll talk more about that in you know a different way. But I kind of set mine up at 6400, and I was stretching it because 3200 was where I would have normally stopped. Yeah. And what did you say? Take it up to 12,800. Yeah, you don't have mine. any problem at all. <laughs> auto ISO for me, uh, I've set to. Uh, don't go lower than 100 and don't go higher than 12,800. And 12,800 is usable. That's wonderful. And one of the other cool features about this is you can set minimum shutter speeds. Right. And then you can also set it for auto so that it actually, the longer the lens, the lo you know the shorter um, yeah. um, uh, shutter speed that you Would get. Would you say with. that again? <laughs> That's, the longer the lens, the shorter the exposure time yeah. goes. So if you're working with a 25... Uh, Battis like this, mm -hmm. where you know you've got wide angle. I could probably, with in body stabilization, shoot it at eighth or a fifteenth of a second without any issue whatsoever. Yeah. But if I put the uh, seventy to two hundred on, I'm shooting at two hundred. I might not want to do much less than sixty. You know, it's funny. We're both. We've been shooting all week. You know, both of us with the A seven R two, and we're both like kids. <laughs> you know, we're both kids. Like, wow, look, look at this. And I don't know are. about you. We haven't been comparing shots. We no. haven't been sitting with our laptops because we're doing long shooting days. But I've been sitting in my room at night, you know, take that last half hour before going to bed, and I've been looking at some of the images, and they are really good. Oh. And I'm not just talking about resolution. I'm talking about dynamic range, high ISO. It's all good. I, I'm, I, I haven't been this, you know, kind of excited specifically after looking at the images mm -hmm. ever. When you normally I see something, I say, oh, man, I have to boost shadows up or, you know, take highlights down and recover the highlights. These things are just coming out so nice, especially in the very contrasty, difficult environment that we've been shooting in the last few days. And there are still some DSLR people, uh, and more power to them, uh, who say, ah, well, you know, the A7R had a crappy shutter, you know, it was noisy and there was vibration and all that. Right. This is now the A7R II, <laughs> okay? This has a shutter that's made out of carbon fiber, the shutter mechanism has a brake on it. It has um, 
full electronic shutter, if you like, so the camera is totally silent. Uh, and the shutter is rated at 500,000 exposures. I remember the day when, I think it was Nikon, brought out a shutter rated at 100,000. And we went, oh my God, isn't that incredible? And then this is now rated at 500,000. It's quiet, it, there's just, it's hard not to sound like a fanboy when it comes to a camera that, and this is far from perfect, but man, did Sony get so many things right. You know what they did? And you know, we talk a lot about this, is they listened. Mm. You know, we, we talk a lot about Japanese camera manufacturers not listening, but somehow or other, you know, either they've listened or they saw these things on their own, but a lot of the things that you would have objections with, and we notice on the very first A7R, mm -hmm. it's not here. Nope. And I will tell you, the media event that I was at in Portland last week, put on by Sony, three days, and we were out shooting, and they organized things, and it was all very nice, and there were dinners. There were two, besides the Sony North America, you know, marketing and engineering and customer service and all those people, they flew over two engineers from Japan, mm -hmm. and those guys sat in at every meal, they went out shooting with us, and they had no pets. And they're both of them, their English was pretty good. And many of us, you know, review web reviewers and, and print reviewers, uh, when we found something we had a question about or that we didn't <clears throat> like, we'd say, well, why doesn't it do this? Or, you know, how come the following? <laughs> well, as we do, you know, and because we look at so many products. And these two engineers from Japan were assiduous in making notes, asking questions, and of course, they're not able to commit, oh yeah, we'll fix that or we'll change it, but they're listening. They are. And let's look at some of the other cool things that we can do with this. There's been a lot of talk about lenses. First off, Sony has done a marvelous job since the A7 series has been introduced of introducing a series of lenses. I mean, in a very short time, mm -hmm. they've put a very wide field of lenses together. Mm -hmm. Of course, you could always use the A-mount lenses with an adapter, right? and we actually do that with a, a couple lenses. So we've sure. got the uh, wide-angle 16 millimeter, a few others. That, and the Tamron 150 Tamron and 600. Of, beautiful. It works great. Mm -hmm. And now there is an awful lot of talk, and we haven't had a chance to test it, but there's certainly a lot of uh, information on the forums about using Canon lenses mm -hmm. with a Metabones 4 adapter, mm -hmm. actually working in many cases with the newer Canon lenses faster than the Canon I, at, at the at the media event in Portland, they had Canon lenses and Metabones adapters, and they had Canon cameras, and I saw for myself the A7R2 and the Metabones adapter autofocuses Canon lenses faster and more accurately than a Canon 5 series camera. That's astonishing. Now, some people are saying, and I've been looking at the website as we've been traveling, uh, some people are saying, oh, well, all the lenses don't work and they don't work absolutely perfectly right. But it's like the dog that can speak. It isn't so much what he says, it's that he can speak at all. <laughs> okay, <Yeah. laughs> It works for most recent Canon lenses. And I'll tell you what's interesting is there was a lot of talk among, not from the Sony people, but among the journalists who we sat around, we had meals, we had coffee, we had beers, and we chatted. And there's a lot of talk and people are saying this may be the first universal camera. Because, and again, not every lens and not every one perfectly, but in addition to all of these Sony lenses, Zeiss lenses, Sony Zeiss lenses, Tamron lenses, you know, all of these lenses, either direct or with adapters, uh, Canon lenses, I'm sure someone will soon have a Nikon, a Nikon autofocus adapter, you know, the writing's on the wall. This may be the first universal camera. Let's take this back a second to this. You and I were talking about Leica M lenses the other day, and uh, some of the criticism that the Leica M lenses had on the original A7. And you tell them, told me, and because you, you were at this event, mm -hmm. that they've done something now with a sensor. I don't know what it is, but now let me let me say two things. I've seen images shot with Leica M lenses and this camera, and they look pretty damn good to me. Now today, the day that we're filming this, before we left the hotel to come out and uh, shoot this uh, discussion, 
one of the big name reviewers is saying, no, it's not so good, and this problem's there, and that problem's there, and people are full of S, and, you know, all the rest of it. You know what? I'm tired of the quibbling. <laughs> uh, it's, and it, is it perfect? No. Does it work better than what we've had before in many cases? Yes. So let's have a perspective on these things. Um, you know, I think what, what happens a lot of the time is when a camera or a lens is less than absolutely perfect, there are some people, like you and me, that say, you know what, this isn't perfect. <laughs> what it's is? Pretty darn close. You know? yeah. uh, it's and pretty it works. Good. And it works. And it works and it does this and that. Uh, and then there are some people who find a fault, hang their hat on it, and say, yeah, yep. you know, forget it. Ah, it's no good. Uh, sorry, that's just not the way things are in my world. In my world, there is nothing perfect, but sometimes good enough is good enough. And there's a lot of talk about the fact that this is not a lossless RAW. Mm -hmm. uh, and everybody is like, oh, until it comes lossless RAW, I'm not going to take it. Well, you know, you're just going to be missing out on yeah. working with the Marvel. Oh, I, I saw, I saw the, uh, an article that someone did where they went to 300 or 400 percent uh, on screen, found a line, and said, look at those little, you know, you know, <laughs> I go, what? <laughs> you know, what? I'm sorry. I take photographs of people, landscape, nature, animals, you know, street scenes. I don't see those things. I don't see them. Uh, and that's, you know, and, and the Sony people have basically said, is this an issue? Yeah, we do certain things. We actually reduce the bit count a bit so that we can get faster throughput, but you can't see it. No. And I agree with them. You can't see it in the real world. But a senior Sony exec has said, we're looking at it. Yep. You know, it's an issue. We're looking at it. Maybe it'll be something that they'll address in the future. In the meantime, it's angels on a head of a pin. You know, this isn't the Middle Ages where they discussed how many angels could dance on the head of a pin. I'm sorry. This is, you know, 11-bit, 12-bit, 14-bit. Does it produce really good images that I can make big prints from that look terrific, have dynamic range, have high ISO? Uh, yeah. So, you know, what are we I haven't made about? any prints yet, but this week I certainly will when I get home. Me too. And... You know, I'm always about, you know what, pick the camera up and go take a picture with it's it. It's about the pictures. You know, go take a picture. Yeah. Don't worry about all this other stuff. This camera, for what size it is, what price it is, the, the resolution that it offers, and the features that are in it, mm -hmm. in my opinion, can't be beat. One thing before we close that I want to mention is the electronic viewfinder. There is a little red T-star. Yeah, over here. So notice that. Which is Zeiss multi-coating. They have put some new multi-coating on this viewfinder, uh, and they're as proud enough of it to actually put the little Zeiss T-Star symbol there, and it he is the largest viewfinder that anyone has. So in terms of the actual apparent image size, the brightness level, the resolution, the refresh rate, I won't say it's as good as an optical viewfinder, it's not, but it's damn good. I think electronic viewfinders like this are now getting to the point where uh, you're not really making a compromise. And you have things like visible histograms, levels, Z blinkies, point, zebras, you know, all, you know, all of this stuff which you can't do in an optical finder. So, again, it's you can't take a uh, technology and just say, oh, it's not good enough. It's not, no, no, no. no, it's pros and cons, trade-offs. Uh, and one of them is in an other videos that are available on the site that we are filming around the same time, we've looked at the cameras like the new Leica S, uh, like the uh, Phase 1 uh, XF, XF camera, which have big, bright, beautiful optical viewfinders and we're gray hairs and we love that we used them in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s and the 90s and we're used to them you know what i'm an old fart but i've gotten used to this and in fact more than used to it i actually like 
these electronic viewfinders. And this right now is state of the art. Yes, and uh, in closing, about and, time. <laughs> it's, <laughs> you've all heard me talk about this in many ways in the articles. To me, it's about having fun. And over the last few days, not only because I'm out shooting with my friends and specifically you, but we're actually having fun mm -hmm. working with these cameras. You're going, hey, Michael, did you know this? Or yeah. did you see that? And yeah, yeah. This, it, you're, it, there's something about the whole joy of photography that's becoming back. We're not encumbered with a lot of the limitations that we had in the past. Mm -hmm. We've got high ISO capability. We've got great lenses. You know, we've got a cameras that can perform and we've got high megapixel counts. Mm -hmm. And we just, it's the best time in the world to be taking pictures. Mm -hmm. So go out there, if nothing else, get a camera. If it's this or even an RX 104 or some of the others, the Olympus Air or whatever. But just go have fun and enjoy taking the pictures. Okay. And get back to making some prints too. <laughs> so, We'll see you on the luminous, luminous landscape. landscape. And that was not in sync. <laughs> we'll try better next yeah. time. <laughs>